Voters have changed their opinions about Brexit, but does it matter to them? I'm going to read into this analysis from Sky News from Adam Bolton, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an analysis from Sky News' is Adam Bolton. With the headline that voters have changed their opinions about Brexit, but does it still matter to them? An election will take place in the next 13 months, and Rishi Sunak and the Conservatives are trying to keep the 2019 voters by branding Sakir as an EU lover. So, I think, um, given what's going to be what could potentially happen over the next uh what's been that going to be what's been happening this week it's very possible that that uh, general election could happen sooner so this has been recorded uh, ahead of time for you for just for reference for people um what are my thoughts on brexit um it's not gone well it's a pretty obvious answer um everything that's happened up to that up uh, from from brexit has not benefited us um, in any way, shape, or form, we have not. Um, uh, think things have just not gone right at all. Now, those who voted for Brexit and those who still believe that leaving was the right decision have said it wasn't the Brexit that they were voting for. Okay, well, I think it's a very important caveat to point out that we never voted to leave the EU single market. We put that when people put that vote in the box as well. That's the first caveat. Leaving the single market was a big mistake. Um, it was not the be-all to the end, end all on that vote. Now, there were other things, other factors at the last general election is what caused people to vote uh, to vote against Labour as well. Um, and it's also important to remember that in the 2016 campaign referendum, the Leave vote had more coverage. The Leave vote had more money put behind them when they shouldn't have done. And um, the, the, the Remain campaign... Uh, did not get their message high, big enough and loud enough across to the public about the benefits of staying within the EU, with, with, with Europe, and um, uh, consequently we we left left the EU. Um, but I do believe that Brexit will come back again, and it, and it will be a topic that keeps coming up for discussion. Now I've had one or two people in my comments saying, "Why are people still talking about Brexit? Get over it." Well, I'm sorry if you don't like it, but you know. Uh, your children's and children's children's generations are going to be worse off be, are worse off because of it um, and it's very important to make that to, to, to remind people of that um, it's really important to remind people the damage that brexit has caused um, are there issues taking place across the world yes are there uh, conf conflicts and uh, things that are taking place that are affecting our country of course the war in ukraine coronavirus uh, israel and gaza thing lots of issues are taking place around the world however all our issues in this country in particular have been exacerbated by brexit and you only need to ask small business medium business this is who've had who've worked with uh, the eu who don't who no longer have the, the who have more paperwork and have to pay out more for deal with these things we have less workers in this country uh, as a result of uh, leaving the european union as well we, we we are worse off as a country. We're just worse off as a whole um, since then. And um, and the sooner we uh, we realise that, the better. But this will be a never. This will never go away. This topic will never go away until we are back in. Until we return or reapply, shall we say, apply to rejoin the Europe to join the European Union. Um, but it won't be for a long time. It won't be for a long time. You know, some people have said in a couple of years, no, no, no. You need you need all part you need cross party consensus and you need the vast majority behind it to do so. Unfortunately we have a media outlet that are misleading the public about uh, not talking about Brexit or are trying to play it down and you know, sovereign does not pay your bills. Sovereignty and patriarchy and all that nonsense of the benefits of Brexit so called. They don't pay your bills, they don't make your life better. Um, then they, they, they don't do anything to to make your life better in any way, shape, or form. You know, uh, we were told more money would go into the NHS. Our NHS is crumbling. We were told that immigration would go down. It's gone up. There's lots of things that that Brexit has poisoned us, 
it has destroyed families, it's destroyed livelihoods. It's very really important to remember that. Some of you may be watching this right now and I'm, and I'm no longer speaking to certain relatives or friends or whatever over this issue. This topic has destroyed destroyed the United Kingdom pretty much. And having that vote was one of the worst decisions this country had ever made in its entire history. So let's read what uh, Adam Bolton's analysis has had to say about it all. So does Brexit matter anymore? I would say that the media are deliberately trying not to talk about it. But yeah, I do believe it still matters. The UK's decision to leave the European Union in 2016 has been the driving and, divi and dividing force in British politics ever since the referendum campaign. It seeded the turmoil inside the Conservative Party, which led to five different Prime Ministers taking over at number 10. The public grew tired of all the delay and argument in Parliament and handed Boris Johnson the struck knee victory in the last general election, thanks to his promise to get Brexit done. That was the one thing Mr Johnson did deliver, but he continued to be be devilled. His party of Richard Sunak found out when he had to deliver the Windsor Declaration under threat from Washington, D.C. Every Conservative Prime Minister since David Cameron has posed, has posed as a committed lever, vowing to deliver the will of the people as reflected in the 52-48% to 48 of the vote. There must be wondering why they bother in opinion polls. Brexit does not feature in the top 10 issue of concerns to voters. If you ask businesses, they will still say it's a factor. Um, it's a, it, it, will, it is a factor, like I said, to people. Clear majority, 75% upwards, think Brexit has damaged the economy. Of course it has. And as of COVID and the cost of living come to dominate the agenda, the Conservatives are consistently trailing Labour by some 20 points or more so far this year. <clears throat> now, could Starmer be bolder on Europe? Given how it looks, if he is going to be the next Prime Minister, and given he is a Remainer who initially wanted there to be a second referendum to reverse the result, some of Labour's leaders' allies are wondering why Sir Keir Starmer is so reluctant to talk about their closer relations to the, with the European Union. Because he doesn't want to stir up, he doesn't want to stir up old wounds. Is a simple answer. Um, the, the the thing is, is that we don't want to give. He doesn't want to give the right wing ammunition on this. When they've already got enough ammunition on them as it is, that's pretty much that's pretty much the, the logical answer here, you know. Why give your opponents more ammunition to use on you when you're not even prime minister yet? As the year draws to a close, politicians and other occupants of the Westminster bubble are drawing up their annual or. Uh, audits of how things stand with extra enthusiasm because a general election must take place at some point in the next 13 months. At the Resolution Foundation conference at the QE2 Centre, they were engulfed when the Labour leader was asked why he has been writing about the possibilities of Brexit. There was another striking moment at another meeting just off Parliament Square, a UK in a changing Europe annual report on the state of public opinion. Participants in public meetings are usually very cautious about film making predictions. Yet when I asked a panel comprising the author of 2019 Conservative Manifestos, a Labour candidate at the next election and two leading political academics, what they thought the outcome of the general election would be, all four of them predicted a majority Labour government without hesitation or uh, deviation. They were speaking days before the latest Tory bust-up and cabinet resignations over immigration policy, which is unlikely to give the Conservative Party a boost. As By the time you guys are recording this, things have obviously rapidly changed then. Some of the Labour front bench are more enthusiastic about Europe than others. David Lammy, the Shadow Foreign Secretary, said the closer ties with the EU are his number one priority and does not wholly disarm the dream of rejoining one day. Now that is a long way off. Later, like I said, it's a long way off from, from that. Takir has muttered that he would like to rewrite a better trade agreement after 2025, <coughs> but he's also ruled out the UK re-entering either the customs union or the single market. Again, I need to stress this point. The British public did not vote to leave the customs union or single market. It was not on the ballot. Yeah, it was not on the ballot, first and foremost. And secondly, Brexiteers and Leave campaign said that we were not going to leave the customs union or single market before that vote. And if anyone tells you otherwise, you're lying. Straightforward lying. Both would be prerequisites for EU membership, as well as the principal triggers of the economic benefits, according to financial experts. Labour is well aware that the single market would mean freedom of movement for EU citizens in and out of the UK. The campaign has played up the immigration issue, which continues to be a major concern to, of the electorate. 
even though the record levels of migration since the referendum has been driven by people from outside the EU. Those arguing for a more positive stance from Sakirs point out that an overwhelming majority of those who intend to vote Labour are in favour of closer relations with the EU. <coughs> Indeed, it would encourage 34% to vote Labour. Another third, 38%, said it would have no impact on voting intentions. The red wall could still be put off if Labour changes course. The catch is that, is that either pro or indifferent are going to vote Labour anyway. More detailed examination of polling carried out by the UK in a change in Europe explains why Sakir is unlikely to make his renegotiation closer ties with EU as part of his um, election campaign. No, he's not. And, of course, he's not going to make it part of his campaign. Like I already said, why would you give them ammunition? Why would you give the right wing ammunition on you? You're not going to. So it makes sense not to talk about it. <coughs> To secure a comfortable majority, Labour would need to appeal beyond its core supporters, winning some of those who voted to Conservative in 2019, including those who switched to Boris Johnson's so-called Red Wall, less affluent pro-Brexit constituencies in the Midlands and the north of England. Some 39% of those who voted for Brexit in 2016 and Conservatives in 2019 said they would be less likely to switch to Labour if it reopened the question of EU membership, compared to a mere 14% who would be attracted. They would be put off even though they have soared on voting leave. That's despite starting new findings and narrowing the majority of Leave voters. 52% said now the economy is worse off because Brexit. And that a clear majority of them, 58%, said they would vote remain in enough a referendum. Starmer aims for practicality over enthusiasm with Europe. Mr Sunak and the Conservatives are trying to keep the 2019 voters by branding Sakir an EU lover. Sakir is advocating for more cooperation with the EU on illegal migration across a channel. At PMQs, Mr Sunak claiming that he would mean accepting 100,000 coming in from the EU. I'm just going to put this caveat here because I'm so sick of talking about um, immigration. We have one of the lowest intakes in the whole of Europe when it comes to migration. Make sure you are aware of that. And if you don't want to believe me, go look it up yourselves. Unlike the stalled Rwanda scheme, the Conservative government's own increased cooperation with and with payments to the French authorities do not do seem to have reduced numbers crossing the channel. Mr Sunak, however, insists the joint working is not for reasons of similar mentality. He frames it instead on competitive terms, repeatedly pointing out that the numbers of crossing into Britain are down by a third this year, while migration into the EU across the Mediterranean is up by 80%. Again, go do your homework. In a similar vein, the Prime Minister brandishes any economic statistics which compares the UK favourably to European performance and ignores contradictory indicators. None of this has endured the UK to its former EU partners. Mr Sunak has avoided or refused routinely meetings with his EU counterparts. In opposition, Labour has sought them eagerly and plans to establish routine contacts if it is in government after the next general election. Why would you not want to talk to them about dealing with the migration problem if you want to bring down the numbers? Tell me... Explain to me in the comment section down below why Mr Sunak doesn't want to talk to the EU counterparts. Doesn't make no sense whatsoever. Yet Sakir is determined that there will be no outbreak of uh, Euro enthusiasm within these ranks. Whether the opinion polls say all these experts predict the Labour leadership does not believe that they do, that they have the next election in the bag yet. No, and they shouldn't think like that. To stump out complacency and quite literally wipe smiles off the faces, the Shadow Cabinet was treated to a compulsory gloomy PowerPoint presentation last week. It pointed out that the issues which determined the results of the previous elections were not often even on the radar 12 months before the vote. Brexit, the most polarising of British political issues this century, has dropped out of sight. It will not drop out of sight. Believe me, it will not. People will mention it. Between now and the, and the election, Sakir will resist Conservative gloomy Goating Greenly, determined to say as little as possible about Labour's plans for Europe beyond occasionally bemoaning. The small for insiders of the bridge and the Tories have burnt. If he thinks that Brexit is going to go away, he's dead wrong. He's clear there will be people at there will be people on those doors, there will be people at places that will mention that word. It will not be going away. To say it is not a, it's not I wouldn't of course it's not going to be the major factor of the general election. Of course not. But it is still going to upset people. It's going to it's going to be it's going to be uh, a topic, but it's not going to be the topic of immigration, which the Conservatives are making it out to be, uh, the economy, the national healthcare service, our education system, our failed police force, our energy costs, our waters, um, our tra our train system. There's all these things that are taking need uh, need president before we talk about Brexit. 
but small and big but businesses will be arguing the point that more needs to be done to restore store closer ties with the eu and that is um, that is a good thing it's a step in the right direction and i'm, I'm glad that labor are saying that but obviously we will have to wait and see um on that but what did i make of this piece i think a lot of adam what adam said is pretty true there's some of it obviously i don't agree with um to say that Brexit is not going to matter anymore, I don't, don't agree. I do believe that Brexit will be a factor, but it will be one of the lower factors in discussions at when it comes to people talking on the doors and all that kind of stuff. You know, people want to deal. People want to know what they're going to, what uh, whoever's going to be knocking on that door to them. They want to know what they're going to do to make their lives easier. What they're going to do to deal with homelessness. What they're going to do for the cost of living crisis. You know, people can't. What they're going to do about houses. We we don't have enough homes in this country. What they're going to do about the outrageous rental prices issue after issue after issue how about our overcrowding prisons do we know you guys know we have overcrowding prisons as well lots and lots and lots of issues yes brexit is not way anywhere near the top of the issue but to say it's outright not even in the discussion would be foolhardy to say the least so what do you guys make of adam bolton's analysis there do you think he's right in what everything says? Maybe you completely disagree with me and you think that Brexit is not going to be a factor at all. Well, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Hit the like button, we greatly appreciate it. Share this across social media and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be notified of when I upload another video. And if you want to financially support me, you can do so by buying me a coffee or joining me on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.